Ayo Marie Isik. I'm from Philippines. And in the like two years, I've been working with ESD Global to establish training programs on environmental self-defense here in Asia. For the summer camp, I'm participating in the level one ESD. For me, being empowered is being able to have a sense of control in your own life, being able to make decisions that will make you happy and not other people happy, but will make you happy. And also I think being empowered is being able to help other people to also feel empowered themselves in owning their decisions and their own life to live freely and to the fullest. Being Before joining ESD Global, my background is on gender and peace building. So I've studied different concepts on women's rights, gender equality, gender-based violence prevention. And I think what really draw me to believing in ESD is that it's basic. Okay, it's so broad, but I think it encapsulates how us women can be able to assert our rights. Because it's different when, I mean, I study all these things, but sometimes I still feel that I don't have a voice or that sometimes some people in my life I allow them to, to to question my decision or to bully me or something like that. So even if I feel empowered myself, there are still instances where I just like silent to just, okay, whatever. So imagine that's me. But imagine if other women who don't know what feminism is, what gender equality is like, normal people who just do their like regular lives and then we have all of these laws and policies that saying oh violence against women is wrong or discrimination is wrong but then yeah they just hear about it but they don't really understand and also they don't know how they can fight those people who are perpetrating those violent things interpersonal violence i think for me esd it's that is a solution to that because it's so simple to teach people the five principles of ESD and then they can easily practice it and in their own lives. And then the way I see how it transformed the participants from our trainings, the understanding of, oh, I can use my voice. My voice is actually a self-defense tool. So that instant insight and learning from them I think that's very valuable and it really draw me to connect to more people and introduce them ESD because it can really change people's lives. We know deep inside that we can say no, but I guess sometimes we we needed a, a push. And it's just sometimes it's, I don't know, it's not easy, especially in our culture because there are lots of, although... People are violating your boundaries, but it's very hard to set boundaries with, especially with family or your loved ones. So I guess for us in Asia, I think the power of saying no and setting boundary, that was, I think, their main takeaway from the participants in our training. I think because in the Philippines and also in the Asia Pacific region, it's not a common program to learn ESD. So when we started in 2021 with our Asia Pacific programs, we get in touch with different organizations that are working on different issues, women's rights, domestic violence, education sector. But this is like the first time that they heard about this program and they got really excited about this. So I think it really fueled my interest to learn ESD myself because there are very few people in my region that are teaching ESD. And there are really many communities and countries that need it. In the Philippines, we've done a couple of trainings here, but there's an opportunity to institutionalize ESD in the in some government agencies in the education sector, women's empowerment sector. So 
yeah, I'm really excited to be trained in August. So when I came back, when I come back, I start teaching in these organizations and also supporting other graduates in the region. There are two things with ESD. One is preventing violence, but also empowering people to be able to be confident about themselves, be confident in in speaking, in feeling strong. And that's also what I want other women and girls in my community to experience because some of them, they don't have access to these kinds of training, like learning about yourself, seeing value in, in how you look or how you speak and like just really owning yourself. I grew up in a rural area, but when I was when I was still a child, my mother would always boost would always boost my confidence. She would always tell me, Oh, you can do it. You can do it. Um so I grew up feeling really confident and just like taking risks. So I think that's why I'm here and I want other girls as well to have that cheerleader or a role model that can really push them towards their goals and yeah I think it's really needed in my region ESG when I was in grade school in high school I joined Girl Scout but in Girl Scout we don't learn about these things in PE we don't learn about feeling confident about your body the teacher will teach you some exercises running how to be fit but they don't teach us to feel confident with our bodies and they don't teach us to like in games they don't teach us how to set boundaries that's also what i like about yes because anyone can learn esd and i think recently i talked to this organization like they're supporting vision impaired group and i talked to them about esd and they got really excited because they haven't had a self-defense class. So I'm excited to also uh, connect with them and teach ESD in this particular group because they also experience a lot of um, violence. They just don't speak about it. But yeah, hopefully I can help. I always believe that a change starts within us. When we teach ESD, we target two, two groups or one is the individual and then when change happens in that individual can also inspire other people and impart ESD with their family or their community or their organization and the good thing about ESD is that we work with grassroots organizations so we're like creating a grassroots movement to start the shift of looking at self-protection and self-environment because in many cultures countries it's like when we talk about safety us women it's always there's like this other person that's in charge of our safety like there there's this savior that when you're in trouble they will come and get you out of trouble Maybe your mother or your family, for example, or maybe your father, your brother, or if you're in an intimate relationship, your partner. Yeah, there's always this another person that will take care of you. And we've been indoctrinated to believe that we're not capable of protecting ourselves. So I think with ESD, we're trying to break that stereotype that us women are not capable of self-protection because I do believe that the systems and structure will change but we cannot wait for century for that to happen and in those years a lot of women and girls will experience violence so we must do something now and by teaching women and girls and other vulnerable population about ESD we can stay white and then that person can teach another person and then can teach another person. So we're slowly building a grassroots movement of strong women 
girls and vulnerable populations that are standing up for themselves and defending themselves from interpersonal violence. I think because I haven't done ESD, I organize these trainings in the Asia Pacific region. I do all this partnerships, collaborations, but I've never done it myself. So I'm really excited to experience it myself and be transformed in a higher level of transformation. Yeah, and also I'm excited to learn from other women themselves and be part of this community. I'm already part of the ESC community, but to feel that same level of bond because all of you went through the same process and then I think together you'll also like surpass the seven days training. I really want to experience that bond because I've seen it. I've seen it with our training participants. We've done, I think, four trainings in the region. And I saw how from day one, some of them are shy in the beginning, not talking to each other. And then at the end, they're like best friends. So I guess I'm excited to experience it myself from that training. It's so inspiring when I see this woman at the end of the training for program, like you can really see the change in their body language, their facial expression. I guess I really look forward to learning from other ESD instructor because I've always worked with Antonella and I know how she teach ESD and somehow I've like, I've come being familiar with how she teach ESD and that's like from personal development perspective, personal development approach. I really like it. So now in this training, I'm also interested in learning other facets of ESD because like in ESD, we do, we use different approach, like nonviolent communication, trauma and farmlands in teaching ESD. I'm also excited to experience impact myself because that's also another approach in teaching personal safety. So yeah, I guess learning from all these different approaches that I can incorporate when I develop my own class plan training program. I'm really, I'm just really excited. And I guess meeting these people that I just see like online providing this webinar about how they teach ESD, like Julie Armand, and then maybe Arlene, you did. So all these people, they're like seasoned in their field in ESD. So I'm really looking forward to learn from them and bring it back to my community. When you're there as a student and just listening and participating. So I'm excited for that because in all of our trainings, you're wearing a hat of organizer. So you're there to look at all of these details and make sure the training goes smoothly. But for the summer camp, I'm there as participant. So it's now it's my turn. <laughs> so yeah, absorbing everything and just like feeling me. Yeah, it's really exciting to be connected with different people coming from different background and doing different things, but all in the same direction, addressing interpersonal violence and empowering women and girls and vulnerable population. I do plan to help the recent graduates. We've done some trainings here in the Philippines with the Department of Education and with youth leaders from, from Mindanao. So they've done the ESD level A. So it's a three day training. So they haven't re really done the full seven days ESD training. So it's not like a complete training that, that equip them all the necessary concepts and skills to be able to teach other people in their communities or organizations. So what I plan to do is to accompany them or support them as well. So I plan to teach ESD a lot together with them so they can somehow receive support from me because 
I really want that our graduates in the Philippines remain active in teaching ESD in their communities, especially that with trained teachers, like what's happening in Europe with Guyana, in Albania and in Romania, that's also one of my goals here in the Philippines that we can somehow slowly train teachers and eventually get the support from the government to integrate ESD in their curriculum. And that's, that's like a long process, but like starting with the teachers, I think it's, yeah, it's a like step in that direction. And then also as well with the youth leaders in Mindanao, since I'm from Mindanao, so I plan to support them as well, go to their communities, teach Muslim women about ESD, also youth, Muslim youth about uh, empowerment self defense, so that we can address issues of bullying in schools and just promote well being and safety among the youth. So those are the the groups that I really want to support after my training in August. Like I have so much plan already, but I think those are like the tangible things that I can do because we've already trained them and we've already identified these people. So it's just a matter of pushing them. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it together. Because sometimes even if you experience ESD, like they are still, I think not very confident to teach this in their organization or they're maybe like confused on like how to do it. Yeah, I'll be there to support them and we'll do it together.